Previously on Bourbon Moth Woodworking. Boo. I took some measurements to figure out my space. Then I cut down some plywood. I used that plywood to make a few boxes. And I kept making boxes until I had three boxes. Then I made a face frame for said boxes and some shelves to go inside those aforementioned boxes. Then I slid each box into place, one, two, three, and I attached my face frame again to those boxes. Then I grabbed some other boxes and I put them on the other side of the room. I trimmed everything out to make it pretty and I installed some drawer slides. And that's where we left off last time. Now to the new stuff. So after getting all of my boxes in place and trimmed out and my drawer slides in, it was time to start making my cabinet doors and drawer faces. A lot of them. 17 drawer faces and six cabinet doors in total. Now I'm not gonna show you all the nitty gritty step by step on how I did this cause I have other videos showing you exactly that. You can go back and look at those ones. But basically I made a frame with a floating panel. I used poplar for the frame because it's paint grade and poplar paints wonderfully. And I used MDF for my panel because it also paints great and you don't have to worry about wood movement. So once I had all my pieces cut, I just glued them together. Nice and easy, Japanesey. And I gotta decide whether I wanna say Easy peasy Japanesey or easy peasy lemon squeezy because I keep going back and forth. I just need to settle on something. Anyways, I just kept making drawers and door faces until I had a whole stack of them. Next, it was time to make all of my drawer boxes. Now, because we're using the Blum undermount drawer slides, I'm making my drawer boxes out of 5 8 Baltic birch. Now, you can use 5 8 or half inch with the undermount drawer slides. I always use 5 8 Don't ask me why. It's just thicker and I guess I like that in a drawer. So after cutting all of my pieces to the correct length and adding a quarter of an inch groove at the bottom of each one to hold my panel, I cut out the little section on the back of each drawer box so that my undermount drawer slides can slide through there. And then I cut out my little panels. Now I just slap these together with a little glue and a 16 gauge brad nailer because this is for my own house and why do I need to spend a lot of time making fancy drawers? You're never gonna see them and honestly, my wife doesn't really care. So I just kept building drawer box after drawer box until I had about a zillion of them. And then it was time to sand all my cabinet doors and drawer faces down. Have I ever told you guys a funny little fact about me? I hate sanding, but that's okay. It needed to be done, so I did it. After sanding down all my cabinet doors and drawer faces, I then drilled out my cabinet doors for my Euro-style hinges, and then I installed those hinges. You might be wondering, why are you installing all this stuff? Don't you have to paint everything? Well, yeah, we'll, we'll get to that later. Just, just don't worry. I'm just gonna get everything installed and then we'll figure out painting later. The hinges I'm using are these face frame full overhang hinges. They're super easy to install because they attach directly to the face frame. So I just pre-drill where I want them to land and then I screw them on. It's easy to determine where you want them to land because they're a half inch overhang. I measured down for my hinges three inches from the top of my cabinet door. So I just measure down two and a half inches from my face frame, pre-drill a hole and slap my cabinet door up there not too complicated. I'll make sure to include a link in the video description for these exact hinges. If you're doing overhangs on a face frame, they are by far the easiest. And you can of course get them in slow close or standard, whatever you want. So after I got all my cabinet doors hung, it was time to install my drawer boxes. Now, the nice thing about undermount drawer slides is they're insanely easy to install. You just hook on the little orange clips, you drill out for the little tab on the back, and, well, you just put them all in the cabinet boxes, just like this. I didn't even speed this up. This is actual speed. I just happened to drink two cups of coffee before I did it. Whew, a little tired. 
but as you can see all of my drawers are installed and they work perfectly see I'm gonna demonstrate ta-da then before I install my drawer faces I go through and I mark every single drawer box just with a number so that I can number the corresponding drawer faces and get them all put back in place after paint then it was time to hook on my drawer faces now, I've said this before in other videos but if you're doing full overhang drawer faces by far the easiest way to hook them on is to use these little rockler drawer face clamp things they just hook onto your drawer box and then they got another little clamp part that hooks onto your drawer face so you just slide your drawer face on in there just like this and you tighten them down all you have to do is get them positioned exactly where you want them and then open up the drawer and screw your drawer face in place to position these drawer faces i just cut a little spacer block that was the correct spacing to go in between all my drawers and i just butt that first drawer right up against my upper cabinet doors then a few screws later and boom i have all my drawer faces installed well i guess i have three of my drawer faces installed wait for it wait for it hold on just a second now okay now i have all of my drawer faces installed beautiful well still needs to get painted but you get the idea next i had a very special task i had to undertake now my wife i love her dearly comes home sometimes with random things like this giant metal gate she found at an antique store apparently it was found in the desert in arizona i don't know but it weighs like 600 pounds and she wanted me to mount it to the wall i thought about different brackets i could use this and that and then i realized that these solid steel bars perfectly line up with a few studs so i just drilled holes directly through the solid steel I did run into the wall on that one. Oops. Anyways, I drilled a few holes in random places. Well, not random places. Places that lined up with the studs. And then using a few blocks, I propped the gate up on the blocks to get it to the correct height. Maybe just a little higher. Yep, there. That looks better. Then all I had to do was take a few really long lag bolts and just screw it directly to the studs. I was hoping that four screws would be enough to hold about, I don't know, it's got to weigh at least 250, 300 pounds. I'm not sure, but it's a lot. I can't completely lift it by myself. So after I got a few of those screws in place, I removed my blocks. So far, so good. And I added a few more screws. And just like that, the glorious metal gate that my wife loved so much was mounted securely to the wall. See? It even holds my chubby self. But more importantly to me, with it mounted securely to the wall, the drawers still opened freely and didn't bang into that gate. That would have been an issue. Next, I added a few little brace pieces connecting my cabinet boxes on the other side just for some added support for our top. All right, we've got our cabinet boxes in, we've got our face frames all sanded down, we've got our drawers in, our drawer faces on, our cabinet doors on, everything's trimmed out and it is looking great. And now it is time to paint everything. Now you're probably wondering, why the heck did you get everything installed before you painted it? Well, that's because I'm gonna share with you my absolute favorite painting technique. Hands down, the option that I choose if I can every single time. You're going to need one little tool to get the entire job done. Telephone. I'm going to call up my buddy Peter. It's ringing. Pick up. Hey, Peter, it's Jason. Yeah, what's going on, man? Hey, I just built some cabinets and I was hoping you could come paint them for me. Yeah. Tomorrow? Yeah. Any way you can do it tomorrow? This is kind of awkward, man. I'm filming a YouTube video right now and I really just need you to say you'll do this for me. Okay, I mean, I'll owe you one. All right, thanks. And that's how you get cabinets painted. 
Like I mentioned, this is by far the easiest way to paint cabinets. The next morning, bright and early, Peter showed up with his crew and they were ready to get to work. Now you might be thinking, well that's lame. I wanted you to show me how you paint cabinets. Well, I've already done that in previous videos. In all seriousness, if you don't know how to paint or are hesitant and worried about painting your own cabinets, just find a good painting company to come in and do it for you. Yes, it will cost you a bit more money, but the finish is going to be far superior to what you can accomplish on your own. For this job, it cost me about $1,800 to have all of these cabinets painted. But when you throw that together with my material cost, which was about $1,500, I'm just over $3,000 for a brand new office space. Not too bad, and much cheaper than if you hired someone to do the entire thing. Peter and his crew managed to get all of my cabinet face frames painted in one day, and they took all of the cabinet doors and drawer faces away, and they'll bring those back in a few days, painted and ready to be installed. In the meantime, I wanted to get my lights all figured out above the cabinets. Now if you remember from the previous video, in this little alcove there was already some can lighting that we covered up with our new cabinetry. So I wanted to rewire those can lights and install some gooseneck lights that hung out over the new built-in. So first I had to drill some holes in the drywall to install my little electrical boxes. Now I will start by saying I am not an electrician, so if I'm doing this wrong, sue me, whatever, it's my house, I don't care but maybe check with an electrician before you do your own lighting and wiring. See, here's a huge mistake I made already. I didn't realize that that wasn't just drywall there. There's actually a floor joist, but I had already drilled a big hole in the drywall, so there was nothing left to do except drill all the way through the floor joist. I mean, that can't weaken it too much, can it? Seriously, I had no clue if this was completely wrong, but I just went for it. Next, I got up in my attic space and I installed these little four inch electrical light box things. Like I said, I know nothing when it comes to electrical. I just know you have to have the box in the right place and then get the wires in there. So I disconnected the wires from our existing can lights. I'm just gonna leave those in the ceiling. No reason I need to spend the time to rip them out. I just cut off the wire after making sure it was disconnected from power and I fed it through my brand new floor joist electrical box thing. I'm sure a bunch of you guys are just shaking your heads right now. What the heck is this guy doing? Well, it looks right from the outside and that's all that really matters, right? I mean, my house didn't fall down, so just get off my back. Next, I stripped off all the ends of the wires with this handy wire stripper thing. I mean, if you squint your eyes, I look like a flippin' electrician, so you guys just need to calm down. And then I twisted some of those little caps on, and I screwed the lights back in place. I mean, it looks like a 100% professional, done-right job, if you ask me. Then I installed these little glass orbs that you could maybe use to look into the future, and I turned the lights on. Well, actually, my foreman turned the lights on, and they worked. So with all of my lighting now professionally installed, it was time to start working on the white oak desktop that will accompany our other cabinet boxes. So after running some ridiculously long pieces of oak through the joiner, I cut them to the right width over on the table saw. And then I smeared a whole bunch of glue onto each seam, and I clamped them together. I did have to use a panel clamp on one end because things just weren't wanting to line up. They were a little wonky. But after a little struggle here and a little struggle there, I managed to get all 12 feet of this desktop glued up. While I waited for that glue to dry, I decided to start working on my floorboards for the office. Now I had trimmed out all of my cabinetry with a little piece of cord around so I needed to cut my trim to go over that quarter round. It was either do that or cut the quarter round to feed my trim behind it. I thought this would be easier because the quarter round was already painted and I didn't want to scuff it up. So I just traced out the quarter round onto each piece of trim and very carefully I cut it out with the jigsaw. 
This isn't that bad. I just cut it kind of away from the line and then I use the jigsaw blade to kind of shape it to get it right up to that line. It's a little bit of an art form, but it's not too bad if you just take your time and go slow. Then with all of my trim pieces cut, I slipped them into place. It's shots like these that really make me think I missed an opportunity to be a plumber. I mean, come on, man, pull your shirt down. Who are you trying to show your backside to? Kids watch these videos. Ugh. But the important part is my trim fit perfectly over those pieces of quarter round. So I did the same thing to every exposed piece of flooring wall transition. I guess that's a good way to say that. And I tacked them all in place with a 16 gauge nailer. I don't show it, but yes, eventually I went back and I filled all these holes and I touched up the paint and I caulked all my seams, but that's just boring content. And there's no reason you need to sit through that. By the time I got all my trim done, the glue had dried on my oak top. So I popped it out of clamps and it was time to do my all time favorite thing sand the whole thing down. Have I told you guys before that I absolutely hate sanding? Well, if you didn't know, I, I do. I, I don't I don't like sanding. Not not really, no. Once I got my white oak top sanded, I needed to cut it to fit on top of my pre-installed cabinets. But it wasn't just as simple as cutting it to the right length and plopping it in place. You could do that, but you'd probably wind up with some big gaps against your wall. The best thing to do was to make a little template that was the exact shape of the wall. So I took a bunch of scrap pieces of ply, I plopped them against the wall right where my desktop needed to land, I scribed them just using a mechanical pencil held firm against the wall, and then I cut out my scribe line on the bandsaw. I did this for each individual piece, checking it, taking off a little more, checking it again, until I got every single piece perfectly scribed and tight against the wall. Then once I had all of my wall sections covered with scrap pieces of ply, I hooked all of those scrap pieces of ply together with another layer of scrap ply. I just added a little glue between the top and bottom layer and then I added a zillion screws. You have to use a zillion screws so that it doesn't move and shift after you get it in place. Then very carefully I slid the template out from on top of the cabinet boxes. You don't want it to move, you want it to stay in the exact position it was when you screwed it all together. And I carried it out to my workshop. Next I plopped it down onto my pre-glued up slab of white oak and I lined it up on the back as best I could. Next I traced either end and I cut off the majority of the material with the track saw. We're gonna flush cut this entire thing with the router, but there's no reason to take off more material than you need to. Once it was trimmed down to a manageable size, I clamped the template firmly in place and I flipped the whole thing over upside down. I flipped it upside down because I'm gonna be using this little guy, a spiral down cut bit with a bottom mounted bearing. I want that bearing to ride on my plywood template and it'll use it, well, like a template to cut out the exact shape that we need our top to be to fit perfectly on top of our cabinet boxes and in between both walls. I also thought that while this is flipped upside down, it would be the perfect time to sand the bottom. With our desktop now cut to the right shape, it was almost time to finish it. First, we just needed to clean off the entire desktop to get rid of any excess dust. I'll be finishing this with Rubio Monocoat, and it does a lot better when you get rid of all the dust. It allows the finish to actually stick to the wood. So with it all cleaned and dry, I started pouring on the finish. Yep, you guessed it. I used cotton white. But can you really blame me? I mean, cotton white just looks so stinking good on white oak. Once you wipe it off, it almost looks like you actually didn't do anything to it, which is just the way I like it. White oak's beautiful enough as it is. You don't gotta 
mess it up with some weird color. Once my finish was dry, I enlisted the help of my beautiful wife to carry the top and put it in place. Now, you'll notice I have a little scrap piece of ply resting on top of my cabinet boxes. I do this when I'm installing a piece between two walls. It just helps if the piece can bend a little bit as you lower the far side down against the wall. It allows you to get in a little bit of a tighter space. Sometimes you need it, sometimes you don't. We'll see how this one goes. Phew. It fit in absolutely perfectly. Yes, it takes longer to make a template and cut it with a router, but you can't argue with success. This wall was far from square, and had I just cut it, there would have been gaps in each corner and along the back. But as you can see, it's perfect. And speaking of perfect, Peter's timing was perfect. As soon as I got the desktop in, he showed up with the freshly painted drawer faces and cabinet doors. Now I assumed he was gonna pull these drawer faces off the drawer boxes and paint them, but he just took the entire drawer box and painted them while they were all hooked together, which made installing them just that much easier. All he had to do was just slide them in place and we were ready to go. And by we, of course I mean me. He left me to install the cabinet doors as those needed to be adjusted slightly as I put them in. Now, the paint was still pretty fresh, and whenever I'm dealing with fresh paint, I always like to throw on a pair of rubber gloves just to avoid leaving any fingerprints or imperfections in the new paint. It actually works really well. So I slowly and very carefully just started throwing the cabinet doors up there. A little adjustment here, a little adjustment there, and before long I had all six doors in place and they were looking black, very black. But that's what I asked him to paint. Well, I mean, what I'm, what I'm trying to say is I asked him to paint them black, so that's, that's why they look black. Anyways, finally with all of my drawer faces and cabinet doors installed, it was time to start hooking on the hardware. To drill out for my hardware, I used this slick jig I got from True Position Tools. I used to make fun of this thing, but when you're doing a lot of drawers and you have to repeat drilling out the exact same spot, the true position jig works amazingly. They're not even paying me to say that, I just love the thing. So I pre-drilled all of my holes and I hooked on my hardware. Yes, it's a black floor with a black cabinet with black lights and black hardware. But that's literally the coolest color combination you could possibly think of black on black on black. Even my gloves are black. Even my son's black. Man, what a beautiful trifecta of colors all coming together to make a great looking office. The only thing left to do was to install our last few pieces of hardware onto the cabinets over on the other side. And with that, our office was complete. Remember, it used to look like this a room full of junk and clutter and now it is a beautiful functional room that will probably get filled with more junk and clutter but we won't talk about that now for now just soak in the good vibes beautiful office space from this nasty hole of mess and debris to well this a well organized expertly built storage unit that will probably get filled with junk and debris. Man, let's just not even think about the future. Just enjoy the present. For now, it is clean and tidy and beautiful. I mean, sure, I know it's not gonna stay this way. I know that in a matter of minutes, my son's gonna come in and play with his trucks and probably ram them into the black paint. But in this moment, right now, before that happens, can't we just enjoy how it is? perfect? Can't for once we just live in the present and not focus on the future? Can't we pretend that these drawers will always be perfectly organized? That each thing will have a place? That each drawer will have a function? A design? That's my dream and don't you dare take it away from me.
Was that convincing? I was trying to make you guys think like I was asleep, but I'm, I'm really not. But I am done with the office. And if I do say so myself, it turned out pretty flippin' awesome. Compared to what it looked like before, it is completely transformed. Now, I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, make sure to click the like and subscribe buttons down below. Check out the video description for links to all the tools and products I use in this video, as well as a link to my website where you can get t-shirts and coffee mugs and plans and motivational posters. Also in the video description, if you're looking for another way to support my channel, there's a link to my Patreon page. You can sign up for a bunch of different tiers. Everything from private Instagram accounts to direct access to me for answering all your woodworking questions and anything else you might want to ask me. So check out those links. Now, I'm going to go back to pretending to sleep for the sake of the video.